Well, hello there, everyone, and welcome back. Today, we're going to be talking about one of my favorite shows this season. We're going to be talking about The Genius Prince's Guide to Rising a Nation Out of Debt. This one was fun. So you know how last time when we talked about the sage with the, uh, the strongest sage with the weakest crest, how I said that basically all the characters were just kind of sort of generic and like very forgettable, except for Iris. Uh, this show suffers from the opposite of that. And by suffer, I mean not suffer. They, they, they do well on it because there's so many memorable characters in this show. Uh, the main character, Prince Wayne, the lovely assistant, Ninim, Ninim, yeah. Then there's the uh, empress lady who's uh, Lomina, Lowell, Lowellmina. And then there's the uh, amazing, uh, probably the best girl in the show, uh, Zeno. She's, she's great. And then there's also, who's introduced a little bit later, another princess named uh, Tol Chilia. And then Wayne's little sister, uh, Falamina. She's also just lovely. Like, they all have great designs and lovely, like, costumes and artwork and stuff. Like, this show, seriously, has great cosplay potential. Like, I'm going to throw that out there first of all. It's, uh, it's real, real nice. So, yeah. Anyway, well, let's discuss it a little bit. So, this is one that I began reading the manga of. And then I also saw that it was getting an anime and stopped reading the manga. Because I was like, I don't want to spoil myself for the manga. And... There were some things that were different. A little bit of um, uh, what happens when changes. Like in the beginning, there's a, a conflict with the Empire, and some stuff happens uh, like in different orders when they go to war with another country. Kind of just little, little different things like that. There's also a lot more like strategy talk in the manga, whereas in the anime, I understand why they cut all that away. Um, because um, there, there's only so much you can do, right? So, you know, I understand that, but the just dynamic here is just beautiful. So this is one where I'm okay with the adaptation of the anime compared to the manga. Stuff that I noticed that they had cut out was, okay, it didn't hurt the story too much, you know? Um, I would have liked that little extra detail and stuff that they had in the manga at times, but, you know... I understand that it can't be done. It's not like they changed a whole bunch of stuff to the point where, like, it doesn't make sense. It's not like in a Strongest Sage where they basically had the two female characters who uh, were, like, getting stronger throughout the story, just basically background characters to support the main character in the anime. Um, they did not do that here, and it's great. Um, so anyway, the, uh, the whole premise of this anime is Prince Wayne wanting to uh, raise his nation out of debt so that he can sell it off and then live a life of luxury. Uh, that, that's his whole premise and goal. And uh, he's basically a genius in his tactics and thinking ahead and uh, manipulating other politicians and stuff like that. So that's why he's toted as the genius prince and whatnot. And, like, it's amazing it is just great it's like the feeling i get from this show reminds me a lot of code geass and the whole uh dynamic of like lelouch being like really smart and like playing tactics and thinking like four or five steps ahead of everyone it's, it's the same thing for prince wayne where he does that a lot and also the dynamic between prince wayne and his lovely assistant ninium is a lot like the dynamic between lelouch and c2 in a way, at least to me, I get the same vibe where you have like the, the genius main character and then like this girl who is supporting them and she's like very skilled and capable of what she does, you know, really great stuff. Uh, and there's also that kind of like semi romantic tension between them in a way, you know, but uh, really great. I, I enjoyed that element of it and just seeing like. Prince Wayne, like, act like, oh, this is not going according to plan, oh shit. And then the huge reveal comes a couple, like, minutes or episodes later where it was like, ha ha, all according to plan. 
you know, that kind of stuff. It, it, it's great. I liked it. Even if like you could say that, well, what's the equivalent of like a Mary Sue of a guy? I don't know. Anyway, even though you could say that it's just, he's, he's just overpowered and there's no like drama going on because you know he's going to win in the end kind of stuff. Well, yeah, whatever. I mean, I watch fantasy because it, it's fantasy, not because of the harsh realities of that person can't do that in reality, you know, that kind of nonsense. So uh, I just happen to like it because it's, uh, it's really great. I like watching people like outplay other people and manipulate them and get what they want, especially if they're not like a complete scumbag. Uh, so that, that's even better. And Prince Wayne definitely has like the, the moral high ground of like everyone in the country because uh, the race of people that Ninium is part of, which I forget the name of the race, but they're all like treated really shittily by like basically everyone else in the world, or at least the continent, at least in the East. I think in the, in the, no, it's in the West that they're treated bad, but in the East they're treated fine because the, the Western religion persecutes the hell out of them or something. So everyone looks down on them, but Wayne is like, I don't give a fuck. And like, lets them live. I mean, hell, he has uh, Ninium as his like advisor and whatnot, and very trusted associate, and all that. Uh, real cool. It's also got some comedy moments in it where you'll see like Wayne throwing a fit when it's just him and Ninium because he's like, this is boring. I'm tired of all this work, yada, yada. And then as soon as like someone else comes in, he's like all serious, like prince mode and stuff. It, it's, it's great. But man, Show was great. I really hope it gets another season because it definitely sets it up to be like, okay, it's getting another season. Like it, it definitely sets it up because they just finish uh, some plot points and set it up to be like, all right, next year's what we're gonna do. But also, kind of at the end, it also set it up to be where it could just be like an open ending thing where it's like, well, we're back to normal again. Same thing's gonna go on. Yeah, ha 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 ha. But I don't know. I really do hope there is a second season because I would watch the hell out of it because the characters were fun and interesting and uh, i really like ninium and uh uh bah, 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 bah. wayne is also great and zenovia the, uh, the other girl that i mentioned who you don't see in this picture here but you know what just look up uh genius prince and then zenovia and uh oh, god damn she's she's beautiful as hell and cute and like just amazing honestly if, if they make a figure of her i will buy it hell if they make a figure of ninium i'll buy it too uh because they're both great characters hell even one of uh his little sister uh uh Falina, i will buy one of, of her too even the other princess girl who is like shown like right at the end that you know doesn't get much screen time other than like maybe five minutes i'd buy one of her too the uh Tolchilia, I think her name is. I, I am not really good at pronouncing that shit. But anyway, I'd buy one of her too. Because uh, she's quite cute as well. But anyway, yeah. Great characters. And that's what... I feel like that's what anime really need to like stand out. Like If you have just generic characters and whatnot, it's, it's just like... Eh? Whatever. They're not memorable, you know? But if you like... If you throw up, for example, uh, a picture of, let's go with like Tanjiro from Demon Slayer. Everyone's going to know, oh yeah, that's Tanjiro from Demon Slayer. Or if you bring up a picture of like C2 from Code Geass, a lot of people are probably going to be like, oh yeah, that's C2. Um, even though C2 is a very simple design. It's just long green hair and, you know, yellow eyes. Like, she's, she rocks that uh, look. Also, Kunjiki no Yami, at least for me, is very like... Uh, noticeable of a design and whatnot. There, there's plenty of characters who, once you see them, their design is just so good. It's like, yep, I know exactly who she's from. Like uh, Raftalia from Shield Hero, or uh, Tanya from Saga of Tanya the Evil. There's just so many characters out there who you're like, they're just iconic. They're like the the brand behind their anime or their manga or whatever you know, right? Whereas, uh, let's say in strongest sage you have like characters that honestly i'm already starting to draw a blank on how some of them look i know uh the main character has black hair i don't remember his eye color 
Uh, he's a pretty average looking person. There was the one girl who had kind of grayish blonde hair and wore a, a bray. Um, I don't remember her eye color. There was the other girl who had long blonde hair. I also don't remember her hair color either. Uh, I think her identifying factor was the fact that she had that like shawl thing, like that weird coat that she had that was off her shoulders the entire time, which honestly made it seem like it'd be very hard to fight in. Um, but then you got Iris who has her hair up in kind of like these interesting like side pigtail things. And she has red eyes and red hair. I think she has like black accents in her hair too in, in places and whatnot. And uh, she has these uh, boots that point upwards on the tips of the toes. I think it's a nice little uh, addition. And she has like these, uh, I think it's, oh no, it's just black ribbons in her hair, not black hair accents. But you know what? That tells you how much character design like impacts you. Like that I can name so much about uh, Iris from that show. Uh, whereas this one, uh, Genius Prince, like there's so many great elements of the characters, like uh, Ninium's like, beautiful uh, red hair, uh, red eyes and white hair, excuse me, that's like has like one um, like pigtail on one side of her head, as you can see here, um, and her like amazing outfit that has like a fucking garter belt, which I just I just love. Then you have his little sister who wears like an elegant ball gown and she has uh, her hair up in these cute little buns with like blue ribbon from them, you know, good stuff. And then there's Zenovia who is like a uh, lovely gowns once again huge breasts she has her hair in like this like interesting like pigtail like style and like she has like this like swoop of hair that goes like in front of one eye that's like really hot it's great that's all there is to it um but yeah and then wayne like wayne is like just an amazing like military outfit or like prince noble outfit it's just great he has that one strand of hair that's like uh, further down on one side of his face than the rest, which is cool. Yeah, honestly, iconic characters. Like a year or two from now, if I see any of the characters that I liked from this show, I'm going to be like, oh yeah, that's from uh, that Genius Prince anime, right? Um, but if I see like a year from now a picture of the uh, Strongest Sage characters, for example, not going to remember what they're from. I'm going to be like, who the hell is that? You know, but uh, that's just me. I don't know. Like I'm saying, well, I'm, let, me just, let me just summarize that. They, the characters make your show, okay? You can have an amazing story, but if your characters are just generic, like long, straight black hair, um, black eyes, you know, and they don't have like a, an interesting hairstyle or they don't have like an interesting style to themselves or a personality, uh, there's not a whole lot that's going to keep people remembering your show. Um, yeah. Like, I'm trying to think. There, there's only really a few, like, normal-looking, like, black-haired characters that I remember. Like, uh, Mio from Kaon with her, uh, I think she has blue eyes and her, her straight black hair, you know? She was the bassist, I believe, from Kaon. I didn't ever watch that much Kaon, but I remember her mainly because of the blue and white striped panties that uh, she helped to popularize, I believe. Uh, yeah, that. And then um, the one character from the, the gambling anime where uh, she has straight long black hair and red eyes and her, her personality is just like, she gets orgasmic over gambling. Um, the higher the stakes, the better, right? And I, I don't even remember her name. It's like, I think it starts with an S, but if you show me a picture of her, I'm like, oh yeah, that show, the, the gambling anime. It's like Kage Burudi or something like that. Kage Burudi, or I, I don't know. I, I can't say the name very well, but like I'm saying, the more iconic you make your main characters, the more people are going to remember your show. Um, so that's why Strongest Sage is probably going to fall to the wayside. Whereas this one could potentially rise upward and just be amazing and get a second season, you know? Because uh, I personally wouldn't want to just get a generic figure of a character with straight black hair. I'd want one that has, like, elegance, an amazing, like, outfit. Um, and, like, Ninium, for example. Right? So, yeah. Anyway, I'm 
I'm getting off track talking about how cool these characters are. Uh, anyway, it's a very great show. It's got some nice action with uh, the fighting and stuff that goes on. It has a lovely just, uh, is it called Theocraft? Is that what it is? Theocraft. No. Politicraft? I don't know. I'm going to say politics, interesting politics of stuff that goes on with Wayne and what he does and uh, his interaction with other nobles and kings and emperors and that kind of stuff. Um, really cool. I like the premise of him just being like, yeah, so I want to get my, uh, my kingdom to a place where I can sell it and then make a lot of money and then just go to a beach somewhere and chill. You know, uh, that, that's great. Even if he maybe not doesn't want to do that, but we'll see. If it gets a second season, I will love it and it'll be great. I hope it goes the route of like the realist hero uh, making a better kingdom anime uh, where I really enjoyed it. I did not think it was going to take a second season. And then they got a second season. I was pleasantly surprised. So hopefully this one's the same way because it's, it's kind of in the same vein. Uh, also, it's not an isekai. It's just a fantasy, which is also great. This one is not an isekai. Realist hero is, but yeah. Anyway, that's going to be all for me, everyone. Check it out. It was a good show. I enjoyed it, and I am eagerly looking for a second season. So, yeah. Bye for now.